you too. It's your boy King Saints, and I'm back before we get to it. And she like, comment, subscribe, and she always watch full video. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Impressive Channel. Both Usher and Beyonce were trending at this year's Super Bowl. And I first want to get into Usher's Super Bowl halftime performance because obviously he was one of the big highlights of the night. And I will say this, Usher hasn't lost it. Usher is performing and singing better than ever, y'all. I mean... I ain't gonna lie. I didn't like it. It was like listening to the radio, bro. Like, you know how the radio snippets a song, <laughs> just a good part of it? He he previewed or he snippeted like 10 songs in like, with like 15 seconds. Like, it was cool, but it could it would have been better if he would have snippeted a song, performed one whole song, snippeted one towards the end, did the thing with uh you know with, uh, with Lil John and um, Ludacris and, and her and all, all other things. But like when he was coming in, that was just too many quick songs. The man is just goaded. He's goaded. He's an R&B legend, and I really enjoyed his halftime show. I think the thing that really sold this halftime show for me is Usher's talent. Honestly, Usher didn't need all of the big stage props. He didn't need all of the different distractions. It's his talent that sold the show, his dancing and his singing. And it's the fact that his mic was on for me. Like, as much as he was dancing, he was singing live. He wasn't using no playback, no pre-recorded vocals, no auto-tune, no special effects. That was all his voice. And I was I very impressed, but I also wasn't surprised by it because I did get a chance to see Usher live in Vegas. So I know that he performs down. This is nothing new, but I really thought that he brought his A game here and he just came to prove to the world. Yeah, I think for him, he still loves what he do. Like I said, like I said uh, before, like when it comes to something that you're doing, if you're if this is something that you love to do, it's not a job. This is not a job to him. This is life this is like breathing this is second nature i think that's why he's still great at it that he is one of the best entertainers of all time the only major critique i have of his performance is a lot of the songs felt rushed and i understand he only had like 13 minutes to put on a show so there's only so many songs that he could do but a lot of the songs that he tried to squeeze in just was too rushed for me but other than that, I thought he gave a great show. He brought out Ludacris, Jermaine Dupri, and Lil Jon for the Yeah performance. And that was definitely the highlight of the show. And he also brought her out and she played the guitar and her did her thing. Oh, she God. played during Bad Girl and she also played during You Got It Bad. She really did her thing. But unfortunately, I do have to critique Alicia Keys a little bit. And I'm not going to be too hard on Alicia. I know people were coming for her vocals, but it has to be pointed out. I think her vocals were not particularly strong in this. Right. You got to understand, she's singing a song that's 20 years old. She didn't been through life. Life didn't happen. She made that song probably when she was 20 some years old. I don't, I don't, I'm not I don't, like, what's her? How old is, how old is she? How old is Alicia Keys? 40? Look, she might have probably made that song when she was 22 years old. Like, come on, bro. Like, of course, your voice from when you're barely hitting puberty. I mean, not barely hitting puberty, but like, for girls. For, for, for girls, like, yeah, 20-something, like, yeah, y'all still getting ready. That probably sounded weird. But you, I, get, I get what I'm saying with that. Like, she was still young. Life didn't, ha life didn't happen. She didn't been through ups and downs of life. She had kids and marriage and drinking and whatever else. Voice is not going to be the same as it was 20 years ago. For real. Performance. She Especially when you got a sweet voice she like she her. Performed. If I Ain't Got You and also My Boo. And her voice was a bit strained. I was like, Ugh, I don't know, Alicia. This is not sounding too great. But Usher saved it. And Usher was doing a little bit too much when he was dancing and trying to grind on Alicia. She's a married woman, and Usher is about... Bro, I didn't like that. I ain't gonna cap, bro. But it, it, even with, uh, with Swiss B's response, like, oh, y'all looking at the wrong thing. Come on, y'all worried about the wrong thing. Y'all should been worried about how long the dress was and the, the beautiful performance. We not worried about negativity. We making history. Like, I feel that, but this is too much, bro. Like... All right, if it's like a um, a music video, a uh, actual music video, I'm an artist. I'm not even if I'm an artist. My girl's an artist. It's a music video. 
All right, I'm gonna I'm take that on the chin because hey, this this, this work. It's gonna make the video go up. Oh, okay, okay. Especially if they would do like a say a remix to the video or something. All right, I'm gonna give you that. But this is a Super Bowl halftime show. No, this is not that shit. Like as soon as when she walked past Usher and he looked at her butt, I already knew what he was on. <laughs> Instantly, bro. I knew what he was on. Like, like, bro, like, everybody's looking at you, bro. Alicia is a beautiful, curvy woman. So it's not no stick figure. So, therefore, we know what you're looking at. And they're, like, all the grabbing it. Like, bro, that's, to me, I'm not going for that. For me and my girl, no. And, uh, again, in the midst of a music video, okay, I'll take that. If, a, uh, if, we, if she's an actor in a movie, I'm going to take that, okay. If it's a commercial, mm, all right. But for this, no. For a halftime show, no, my boy. Especially when you've already been known at his show to be doing this exact thing to people's to people to to either people's girlfriends or people's uh, wife. All right, why are you gonna go for somebody that's single? You want to go to people that's <laughs> like, oh, really? I wouldn't fit in that to get married to his girlfriend too so he's just doing too much he always on somebody's lady <laughs> but overall i thought the show was good and it just solidified the fact that usher is one of the best performers of all time no debates he's one of the best and since we're talking about usher i do want to briefly talk about his new album coming home I have to be honest, I was disappointed. And I was disappointed because I anticipated Usher to come with a strong album. But to me, the album was giving me Vegas Usher. It wasn't giving me classic R&B Usher. The songs were just kind of mid and generic. And it didn't seem like he had any real musical direction with this project. It seemed like he put it together real quick to capitalize off of his Super Bowl moment. So, I wasn't really feeling it. I was a little disappointed because my expectations were high for Usher. However, I will point out some positives in the album. There are a few good songs on there. I do like A-Town Girl featuring Lotto. I mean, it's a cute little TikTok song. I can see it being a little TikTok bop. Also, I a think TikTok Kissing Strangers bop. is a nice song for pop radio, you know. I also like I Love You and Please You. Even though the song sounded a bit generic, I still liked it. It sounded good. He also has this song called Stone Cold Freak. <laughs> it's like, I like it, but I don't like it. It's weird. It just sounds like um, a throwaway Chris Brown song from eight years ago, if that makes sense. But it's catchy. It is catchy. He also has this pop song with Jungkook called Standing Next to You. And I like the song too. It kind of sounds like a repackaged Michael Jackson song, but... I do think it was one of the better songs on the album. And also the song Good Good with Summer Walker and 21 Savage was yeah, good like as well. Song. But the songs that really, really, really stood out to me was Risk It All featuring her. I really like that one. I but the it. song I love the most is Ruin featuring Phils. Ruin is a smash hit song. And I think it was very smart for Usher to release this as a single because it has that Afro beat vibe mixed with R&B. And that's really the wave right now. So I thought that was very smart. And the song just sounds amazing. I think it's a smash hit. It's probably going to take some people some months to catch on to it. But it has the potential to be a big song for Usher. And I hope he really pushes this song because it's the best song on the album now i do want to ask the question did usher throw shade at chris brown on this album i think he did now in his song i am the party he said ends tom bow versus with me please stop i know you think he's the bay but he's not i don't know if that i don't know it might be but i'll be trying to compare people who are <laughs> like i need someone like Talent wise, the work of they, hey, they both super talented. They both can sing. They both can dance like super crazy. It's like, but it's like comparing, like if we this this if we looked at it as, as basketball, comparing Jordan to Kobe or according to to uh, Kobe to Jordan, these are total different eras. These are total different eras, bro. Like they came in the game two different times. Like if they were the same age, I can see. They came in and they came in the game at the same time. I can see, but no, like put like you should be. It shouldn't be based on age, but put somebody closer to his age, closer to uh, to Elsa or closer to, to Chris Brown. 
Them, they, no. These are two different eras, bro. They're both still talented, though. Now, I don't know about you, but this might have been some shade towards Chris Brown because I do remember there were some conversations about Usher and Chris doing a versus battle. Usher seemed open to the idea, but Chris kind of felt like the versus battle was for washed up artists. Would you do something like a versus? Yeah, I man, me and Chris will kill the world if we ever did something together like that. I'm not saying it's versus, but right. I will, I'm gonna just say this. If that ever happens, it'll be one of the biggest things that anybody has ever experienced in entertainment. My whole position on the, on the versus thing is, is like, it's cool, it's dope what it's doing with the culture, but I feel like, where I'm at in my in my quarter of my game, like I'm not down 20 points. You feel me? Like so, I feel like me doing that would be like, okay, you know, I'm about to hang it up. So uh, that's a real, 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 you know. What this, you basically say you smoking everybody. I'm smoking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So Chris Brown said he would smoke Usher, basically. And at this point, that. I don't think Usher cares about doing a versus or even a collaboration with Chris at all because they did fall out last year. They actually got into a bit of a scuffle because Chris Brown got upset with Tiana Taylor and Usher didn't like the tone he was using with her. And he tried to intervene and things just kind of went haywire and Usher and Chris fell out. And it was really crazy because Usher threw Chris Brown a birthday party to celebrate him and everything, but Chris Brown was acting crazy. So Usher was like, man, forget you. And this kind of makes sense why Usher is now shading Chris. He's now changing his tune and saying he can't even do a versus with him. And I have to agree. And this is not to take away from Chris. I do think he is a talented artist. He makes good music and he has been holding the game down for a long time. But Usher is still a legend. He's a veteran at this. And oh he has proven tonight at the Super Bowl that he has no competition. Okay? So let's just leave it at that. Now, moving on, I want to talk about Beyonce because Beyonce <laughs> kind of stole the show as well. <laughs> and a lot of people feel like she stole Usher's moment because she did a surprise Super Bowl commercial with Verizon. And she also announced that she is dropping a country album and she's dropping it on March 29th. And this is supposed to be her act two album. And she already dropped two singles, one of them being Texas Hold'em and another one being 16 Carriages. And I did get a chance to listen to both singles and I actually like it. You know, I do think country music fits Beyonce's voice very, very well. Texas Hold'em is very much a Beyonce style record, but she also- I ain't gonna count. Like when it comes to, be to Beyonce, it's nothing really she can't do, bro. Like when it comes to when it comes to the singing stuff, it's nothing she can't not do. I hate that that we put artists in in a category to where they can't go venture out and do certain things. Like how I think Kate Michelle wants to do country music, but I think her label or the fans or whatever don't want her to do it. But it's like, bro, if she can do the song and it sounds good, what's the problem? I don't know. Like I don't get it came with the authentic country vibes and also 16 carriages sounds nice as well i actually played it a few times and there's something about the song that it's kind of sad to me i don't know it just sounds like a song that has a feeling of finality to it and you know beyonce is just reflecting on her long career and she's thinking about how much she had to work and how she had to sacrifice for her legacy and she talked about watching these 16 carriages driving away and i'm wondering what exactly was she envisioning was she envisioning like a home going service like what is it i don't know but the song just sounds sad to me it's beautiful but sad but aside from that i do think it's really cool that beyonce is actually doing a country music album and seeing her pivot in a country direction is kind of smart because country music has had a resurgence on the mainstream pop charts. It's always been a big genre, but I've noticed that it's become more mainstream again, especially with the major success of Luke Combs cover of Tracy Chapman's hit song, Fast Car. So Beyonce is following the trend and I think she realizes how profitable country music is. And it's possible that a country music album can help her finally get the coveted Grammy award that she wants. And that is the album of the year award. Now the issue well, is Taylor Swift that. also dropping a new album this year. I thought you have been <laughs> so at that boy. Competition is going to be a bit tough because the Grammys do tend to favor Taylor. So I don't know, but we'll see how Beyonce's country album sounds and how it does. 
I'm actually very, very excited to hear it. And I'm starting to understand the concept of Beyonce's Renaissance trilogy project. And it's interesting because I came across this tweet that pretty much summed it up. It said the way Beyonce is reclaiming genre started by black people with her making act one house music, act two country music and act three, which we can assume will be rock and roll music. She is showing everyone that black artists are the blueprint when it comes to these genres of music. I thought that was a very interesting post and it makes a lot of sense. It really does. Now, She's I want to get into some of the comments about <laughs> Beyonce releasing music on the night of the Super Bowl. A lot of people are excited for Beyonce's new music, but there are some people who felt like Beyonce stole Usher's moment. Here were some of the comments that I saw in the shade room. Why is she trying to distract from Usher's halftime show? Girl, not now. Can Usher have his moment? Dang. B told Usher, watch this. <laughs> she always do stuff like this on other people's night of celebration. That drop can wait till tomorrow. Hashtag check her records. Beyonce, can you just let Usher have his moment? Uh uh. This was very ballroom. Beyonce stormed Usher's moment. Y'all yeah, put it all on her like like these artists don't have a marketing team. They they have a label. Like they, they tell they telling them to do certain things on, on certain aspects, on certain moments, on certain certain situations. It's a team that's 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 doing it. It ain't just all her. Trust me. Like she's not a. I don't want to say independent, but I don't. She's not an independent artist, bro. Like she has a team. She has a marketing team. She, she has a promotion team. Promo like <laughs> they're on it. They're on it. She's getting on my nerves, and I love her. Can Usher have his night? Nobody want to hear this stuff. Usher couldn't even have a full twenty four hours. The f. Now she knows she could wait until tomorrow and let Usher have his day. Shake my head. Mm -hmm. Dang, can Usher have something disrespectful to Usher? So as you can see, some people were calling Beyonce out for releasing surprised, songs bro. the same night of Usher's Super Bowl. I can understand why people would think it is a little funny for Beyonce to just randomly drop today. I mean, she could have waited until Friday for an official release, but I think this moment was too good for Beyonce to pass up. Super Bowl night is when everybody is tuned in. So Beyonce dropped her Super Bowl commercial for Verizon and she announced her album and dropped her two singles. I mean, that was the perfect way for her to capitalize off of all the traction. So I can't mm -hmm. blame her. I mean, she's doing what any businesswoman would do. But did she take Usher's moment, y'all? <laughs> she probably did, who knows? But both her and Usher were trending. So I think it's a win for them both. Anyway, tell me what y'all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I can't say he saw the moment because he still, if he, if she was still in it or stole it, he stole it right back with his performance with, uh, with, uh, with Alicia Keys because he was trending all night with that stuff, bro. He's still trending right now. It's a gang of memes right now for going up. <laughs> okay, the next one.